All right. There you thank go. Thank you so much, Chairman Manchin, and uh, to you and members of the committee. Thank you especially for uh, having visited us in Alberta. I'm sorry we didn't offer good weather, but uh, come back <laughs> in the great. summer. Great. I, I thought it was all Canada. <laughs> uh, senators, if you remember one thing from today's hearing, I hope it will be this, uh, that the province of Alberta is by far the largest source of U.S. energy imports. U.S. energy security depends on Alberta. And Alberta can be a huge part of the solution to the problem of American energy inflation and the cost of living crisis. Senators, last year, over 60% of U.S. oil and gas imports came from Alberta. That's 6-0, not 1-6, 60%. The U.S. Energy Information Administration reports that in tw last year, uh, the United States imported 2.2 billion barrels of crude oil, uh, 1.4 billion of which, or 62%, came from Canada and virtually all of that from Alberta. Let's put that in perspective. Last year, 13% of U.S. oil imports came from all OPEC countries combined and only 6% from Saudi Arabia. So Alberta supplies the U.S. with 10 times more oil than Saudi Arabia and five times more than all of OPEC. The same is true for natural gas. Last year, my province shipped uh, 4.8 billion cubic feet of gas per day to the U.S. That's 63% of your gas imports. And I'm proud to say that Alberta is home to the world's third largest proven and probable oil reserves, about 180 billion barrels worth, and one of the world's largest reserves of natural gas. The province of Alberta owns those resources and has the exclusive constitutional jurisdiction to regulate their production. Now, after your country has spent hundreds of billions of dollars in recent decades uh, defending security in the Persian Gulf area, it turns out that the solution to the challenges of energy security is your closest friend and ally. Vladimir Putin's brutal invasion of Ukraine has proven the danger of allowing dictators to dominate global energy markets and weaponize oil wealth, using it to spread violence, instability, and terrorism around the world. And that's why we were, frankly, so taken aback when President Biden vetoed the Keystone XL pipeline. It would have safely delivered 830,000 barrels a day of responsibly produced Canadian energy to the U.S., more than displacing the 670,000 barrels a day that you all bought uh, from Putin's Russia last year. We were also perplexed where, with the administration's response to sky-high gas prices was to plead with OPEC to produce and sell more oil while working to lift sanctions on dictatorships like Iran and Venezuela. White House officials have reportedly discussed a presidential visit to Saudi Arabia to press for more production of their oil and their exports to the U.S. Oil that is used to buy cluster bombs dropped on Yemeni civilians. Well, Senators, uh, Calgary is a lot closer to Washington than Riyadh, and you don't need the U.S. Navy's Fifth Fleet to patrol the Great Lakes. Uh, to quote former Montana Governor uh, Brian Schweitzer, we don't have to send the National Guard into Alberta. Chairman Manchin, we truly appreciated, as I said, your recent visit to Alberta to see firsthand the amazing progress that is being made to reduce emissions and improve the environmental performance of Canada's oil sands, but to see also the deep partnerships between our energy producers and our Indigenous people, and to discuss the development of a North American energy alliance. We invite other members of this committee uh, to visit Alberta and see for yourself, judge for yourself, draw your own conclusions about whether Alberta is a preferable solution uh, of uh, as pre preferable to, to, as a source of imports to OPEC. Between current unused capacity in the North American pipeline system and the prospect of pipeline optimization, plus the scheduled completion of the Trans Mountain expansion pipeline to uh, Canada's West Coast next year, Alberta will be able to increase our crude exports to the U.S. by upwards of a million barrels a day over the next couple of years, helping to reduce prices at the pump. But with political will from Washington, we could also get another major pipeline built that would forever allow the United States to free itself from imports from hostile regimes. Mr. Chairman, where there is a will, there is a way. The government of Alberta is keen to work with you and, and friends in the United States to get another major pipeline built to achieve the dream of North American energy independence and security. At the same time, we must work together to maintain current supply and that's why I call on the United States government to join Canada in demanding that the governor of Michigan respect the 1977 Canada-US Pipeline uh, Transit Treaty by abandoning her efforts 
to decommission the Enbridge Line 5 pipeline that has safely delivered over 600,000 barrels of Canadian energy to the U.S. for six decades. Her plan to do this would only worsen the energy and cost of living crisis at the worst possible time. And we must work on both sides of the border to remove regulatory barriers to the production and shipment of energy. Senators, replacing conflict oil imports with Canadian energy is not a threat to the environment. We take seriously the need to cut emissions to, and to address climate change. Alberta's oil and gas producers uh, and pipeline companies have some of the world's highest ESG rankings. Alberta was the first place in North, North America to implement carbon pricing. Through massive investments in clean tech, we've reduced the carbon footprint of an average barrel of Alberta oil by 36% since the year 2000 uh, to below the global average for heavy oil. Our oil sands producers are committed to achieving net zero uh, greenhouse gas emissions in their operations by 2050, in part through a big expansion of our world leading carbon capture, utilization and storage infrastructure. We're on track to reduce methane emissions by at least 45%. We're leading Canada right now in renewable energy investments, and we're set to become a global hub in the production of net zero and low emitting hydrogen. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. I look forward to your questions and ongoing collaboration on developing a North American energy alliance. Thank you, Premier Kenny. And